Hello and welcome to FiberTrack. My name is Sarah. Welcome. You are most welcome to my creative space here in the North Woods of Maine. On this episode, there will be baking, there will be quilting discussion. I have a few new treasures to share with you as well as a book review, and there will be some knitting. If you are a patron of this podcast, a deep heartfelt thank you if you have donated through coffee. Again, I am so encouraged and humbled by those that choose to support this creative journey financially. For those that offer insight to share, like, and subscribe, thank you so much for your support of this podcast. I'm so glad that you're here. Let's catch up. I have a great recipe that I've been making for over 20 years that has become known as the power muffin. And when I got a grain mill, the fresh milled flour was really perfect for this particular recipe because it's very dense and it has all of the bran and the germ. And this is kind of a kitchen sink muffin recipe. Uh, I put a variety of different things in and it can range from apples, zucchinis, carrots, pumpkin, banana, kind of whatever you have on hand in your pantry. And it also includes flaxseed and eggs. You can use coconut milk, almond milk, but buttermilk, milk, and cinnamon and brown sugar. Now, if you're a patron, I have gone ahead and included an attachment of this recipe for you to try. This is really what we pack for kind of morning skis and getting out and about. Great with a cup of coffee. I do add dark chocolate chips. It's a comforting and cozy old favorite. I'm sure you've guessed by the prologue to this segment that I have embarked on another quilt project. This one is a whim to gift a baby quilt for a dear friend at work who I value professionally and personally. And I was looking and thinking about what I could do to celebrate the uh, arrival of her new baby. And I think, you know, as people who make things, um, you know, these meaningful moments, whether it's celebratory of new life or uh, the comfort of um, providing in times of grief, you know, we often lean into uh, projects that we can give away. And I wasn't in the mood to knit anything and I knew that would probably take me a little bit longer. And I had quite a bit of scrap fabric that I was itching to move on uh, for it to be appreciated and used and worn, etc. So I went and grabbed the fabrics that I use for my niece's quilt. This is a Dear Stella line from Clara Jane. And if you have been with me, you'll recall that I used this for my niece Annie and I put it together, I think also in pinwheels. This seems to be my go-to block. Um, and I am doing six and a half inch blocks uh, in these pinwheel patterns. And then I am doing a complementary block across the row in this um, kind of really mellow golden um, honey color from French General uh, and Moda Fabrics. All of this is from Stash, and uh, I was so glad to have had some of these solids that I think I had purchased for a bag project. 
um, that went so perfectly. And I then decided I wanted to add some borders. The current measurements <clears throat> for this is going to be, um, they're six finish, they're six inch finish blocks and I'm doing a seven by eight. So 42 by 48. And then I've added some borders to, again, um, move some fabric on and uh, just complement the colors on the inside. I do think a border on a quilt does uh, help kind of pull out uh, motifs and other, uh, you know, just make it pop to the eye and balance it. So I have, this was the back that I had used on the quilt and I have enough of this to do the initial border. And then because this is so fun and kind of unexpected, I have this speckle fabric from Ruby Star Society and I'm going to finish that. So the yellow will be a, a two and a half inch border and the uh, orange will be a either a two and a half inch finished or a three inch border. So I originally wanted to use this as the outside and have that just kind of be a thin little frame all the way around, but unfortunately I don't have enough. So I am encouraging my brain to be flexible and uh, not look to see if there's more of this fabric and um, go ahead and work with what I have. So that's the plan now. Uh, they do come together fairly quickly. Everything is cut and I just need to sew it. I have a vacation coming up, hooray, uh, where I will be uh, kind of in this, in this space for an extended period of time. Now, that being said, my brother's family is coming up for four or five days to ice fish and play and do art and all those things and, you know, cook outside, do all the fun things in the winter that they do at uh, their aunt and uncle's house. Uh, but I do think that, um, Again, this, these pieces will come together quickly uh, and I can hopefully have that, the, the top or the flimsy done uh, in order to quilt it myself a little bit later. The baby is due in April, very close to my personal birthday, so I'm very uh, excited about that bit of uh, coincidence or serendipity. When I'm doing half square triangles, I just thought I would make a note here of a couple tools I find handy. This is not gonna be revolutionary, or not revolution, it will not be revolutionary or revelationary <laughs> for you, but I just wanted to say that um, this seam tape I find really helpful in cutting down on the number of steps and being efficient because I don't need to go and draw a line to do the quarter inch on either side for these half squares. Um, triangles and um, so it's one less step I have to do and it does do a pretty good job keeping everything um, pretty well lined up. I did also starch this fabric which I think made a difference in my kind of uh, what's the word uh, precision so I was this is kind of one of the first things that, projects that I've done where I've starched everything. Uh, I have worked with starch on my Stars Upon Stars if you've worked with me uh, which has been really helpful and I'm just completing and moving through my first section of starch fabric to see if that makes a difference on my overall uh, finished piece and its preciseness. So this particular pinwheel pattern that I used did not build in any fabric so that when I finished I could, you know, um, fit, uh, cut it down to the actual size. In other patterns that I've done, the uh, designer has built in um, enough wiggle room so that if it's a bit wonky, you can cut it down and get more exact uh, finishing measurements. But on this particular one, it wasn't. So I was a little bit like, uh, I'm not, you know, super sure that I want to just, you know, willy nilly this right through. So the seam tape was helpful. The starch was helpful. And the last thing is this uh, steam, um, this seam presser uh, before putting steam onto my seams, which can uh, shift and bend the fabric. Um, I like to press them down with this and then just put the iron flat, dry heat, and then add steam. So when I was making my Orkney, oh, the name by Robin Ruth Designs eludes me, Orkney Grove, that might have been it, uh, quilt, I had to make a number of compass blocks and she recommends that you press everything with dry heat and then go in with steam to seal it. So again, not uh, anything new that, you know, quilters or uh, people who've been doing this for a long time might know, but I just found those couple things to be really helpful in creating more exactness for my finished 
pieces. Now I am, like I said, going to quilt this on my machine with the walking foot and I'm going to do a little bit of research on uh, that because last time I did uh, Annie's quilt on that I did not get the exact results I wanted with tension and um, kind of Again, that word comes up a lot for me, precision. Um, and the quilting looks really nice on the back of the quilt where the backing is, but on the front, it doesn't sometimes line up with the seams quite correctly and etc. So I want to create or research uh, some techniques around walking foot quilting and see if there's any books, which is usually my go-to, uh, or tutorials on YouTube. So that's kind of the quilt uh, endeavor at the moment. I did do a little bit of work on my personal design that I talked about from last time, which is uh, the English paper piecing panel I've created, but not much because I'm kind of wanting to get this done. And I have Madison's quilt, uh, which is the pop star quilt, and I will detail it um, for you. That is finished from the long armor and I have cut all of the bias binding to go around the edges. So that one will be out and I've got two more to take to the long armor and uh, and then Cameron's quilt to zip through, right? Zip through. So that's kind of some of the things I have planned in the works for quilting. My knitting has exploded a bit, but I'll be filling you in on that in a little bit. I'm so grateful for the viewer that introduced me to Kirsten Neumuller's book and work, Simple Weave. I was mainly attracted to this particular piece because she talks a lot about making your own rigid heddles for band weaving. And while it does have a variety of beginner instruction and beginner projects, I was fascinated with the idea of making some of my own weaving tools. I had really admired in the past some of the beautiful carved heddles that I had seen on a couple different shops on Etsy, and of course the historical ones that have been unearthed and etc. So the do-it-yourself tools portion of this book was really interesting, attractive, inspiring and I was ready to jump on the bandwagon. She has some nice detailed instructions on not only just the tools, but also the materials that you'll need to make them, starting with the actual splitting of the wood. I happened to order from her some beautiful linen thread as well as a blank to carve on. My mom, a while ago, when I was interested in chip carving, got me a carving set, and she also got me this beautiful book, and I thought this would be a perfect mashup of those two interests, the curiosity behind working with wood and making something functional, and also being inspired by these beautiful designs, which I don't know why I haven't pulled this book out earlier and used it for some embroidery inspiration. If you have a chance to check out Kirsten's work, I would definitely recommend it. And I'm looking forward to fooling around with some carving later on this year. Hello and welcome to the knitting portion of the episode. I want to make sure that I reiterate, as I always do, how deeply humbled and encouraged I am by those that choose to contribute financially through Patreon and through Coffee. Patreon, it's typically a charge of $3 per episode. <laughs> here comes the breeze, uh, which wasn't here before, but uh, $3 per episode, so no more than $6 per month. That's the minimum ask uh, if you'd like to contribute more you can amend that price in your subscription and coffee is a donation platform and I am 
working on if I can get my bonus content um, up onto that Patreon specifically for those that contribute on a month to month basis. Uh, so you might get it the month that you contribute. Uh, if that's enjoyable to you, then I'd like to find a way to offer that perk uh, compliment uh, to those donators. That well, was a really hard sentence for me to say. It is an epic battle between light and sound today. That is a steep learning curve for me and sound probably more so than light, uh, but I have my dead cat on so fingers crossed that uh, it is amplifying my voice and not the surrounding ambient noises of this beautiful nature uh, which is in the southern part of the state of Maine where I am staying with my parents. Uh, I have been taking some opportunities to spend extra time with my brother's children, my nieces and nephew. And I took Madison to a performance uh, this weekend and I'm going to a birthday party tomorrow for a friend. So I decided to stay down as I gear up for a week long vacation off of school and I head back to my home in the north. For those that are new, I commute between these two places for work and uh, visiting with family and taking care of some priorities down here. Let's see, I think that's really all of the context I need to provide, right? Uh, we're outside, obviously. It is an unseasonably, beautifully uh, mild day here in, for February. And aside from a breeze, which was, did not exist when I came out, um, I'm fully enjoying uh, taking advantage of this outdoor space to talk to you. Knitting. I finished the sweater for my niece Madison. I have been working on the Vilmax Barn by Lenka Newman and it has gone to live with her. I knit that in Knitting for All of Heavy Worsted and I am pleased with the finished product. The pattern shows up quite beautifully and uh, the sizing uh, worked out great. This was a mashup of Linka's pattern with tin can knits patterning sizing that I re-engineered uh, to work top down. And uh, I think I bought the children's pattern. Uh, there is an adult version done and I think Alifos Lopi. And this original piece was done in Pierre Ghent and I wanted to knit it in a worsted weight. The originals knit at a different weight of yarn. And so I fooled around with gauge and et cetera, et cetera, and kind of rolled the dice a little bit and I am really happy with the way it fits. Uh, she doesn't like things that are tight and constricting, uh, so I kind of made note of that, and there is room to grow. She is eight years old. So off the needles to the new home. I did give it a gentle soak. I dried it flat. Uh, that did change the performance of the yarn a little bit, so it did add a little bit more loft to it. Uh, so I was quite happy to see that transformation coming out of a block. And uh, yeah, so overall, I think the project was a win. And I, I have mentioned in the past that knitting for all of the the sense, the uh, sense, uh, what's the term like? I want to say the sensory experience of that yarn uh, was not exceptionally enjoyable for me. And I, I recognize that at that time I was also working with some spin drift, which was one of my favorite yarns. So there could have been a pre-existing subconscious draw to back to that project and wanting to like, you know, table the other one. Um, but in the end, overall, I'm quite happy uh, with where that project landed. Now, I also took the opportunity at that point, because it was a finish, to take a look at what I have going on and kind of renegotiate where I wanted to go, what kinds of things I was attracted to in that moment, and where were some easy wins for me. I finished that sweater, um, and then I um, went ahead and finished the sleeve on this um, kind of mashup again of the Salalu from the Knitted Kalevala. The sweater canvas is actually the high and low sweater by Deborah Purcell from Tidal Yarns. Um, and I added the chart from the knitted Kalevala by, uh, I think it's Yana Cosette. These are both done in Tidal Yarns four ply. I decided to, I don't know what I did with the sleeve, but it fits lovely. I think I did follow the decreasing for the pattern of the high and low sweater. And I added a um, moss stitch cuff and it's ready to have the next sleeve picked up, which I am planning to do over vacation um, and put a little time into that. So 
another kind of moment of transition to both celebrate, yay, that first leave is done, and then also take stock of, got to get the next one on. What were the numbers that I used? Did I write it down? Probably not. So, the, so I'm going to try not to get stuck in transition, but I do have a plan to get that sleeve on when I get up north um, and I can sit with it for a minute. So hooray, that one's done. The other thing I've been working on, uh, continued to work on is my Yell cardigan. This is by Marie Wallen. And as I mentioned before, I am knitting that in Jameson's Spindrift. If you were with me last time, I had knit a good portion of the first color work section and I was not happy with the way the colors were working together and I kind of, well, I had to wait to get back to my house because I didn't bring any of the other yarns with me. I didn't make that mistake this time. I brought all the yarns with me and the only knitting I touched <laughs> to this point was Madison's sweater and the uh, and this high-low sweater mashup but it would have been there should I have needed it. So I am just about to finish the first motif of my, uh, of the yell. And this is done in Spindrift, Ruby and Wren, Burnt Umber and Camel. So I am getting ready to finish this last row and then I'll be making some decisions about where I want to go next and, um, paying attention to, you know, one thing that I've tried to look at overall is how to tie the colors in um, as we go up. And so Marie Wallen, um, when I'm looking at the original design, I am looking to see, oh, she used camel here. And then two motifs later, she pulled that camel in just to try to create a cohesive look. So um, yeah, so I think my next two colors are going to be tundra and camel, um, but I'm unsure at this moment. And I will obviously keep you posted. I'm just really enjoying this project. I don't need to say any more about that, do I? If you've been with me for a while, you'll know that um, this is really my happy place. I find it very cozy, comforting, familiar, um, uh, beautiful, balanced, all of those things that just bring a little sense, uh, kind of like a weighted blanket on the senses for me. So that is the Yell by Marie Wallen. I did take a little opportunity to do some uh, dream knitting and thinking about where I might like to go. What was I craving for color? What was I craving for uh, texture? And I brought with me a whole bunch of stuff uh, just in case I got um, inspired to cast on. And I did bring um, this beautiful yarn. This is Watershed by Harrisville. This was sent to me from my friend Nicole and I am going to use this yarn uh, for a hobbit vest for my nephew Cameron, who is already chomping at the bit for his next knit. I've been using that as a little bit of a um, of a funny wager with him and his hockey games. I'm like, if you get assist an assist and a goal, that's two skeins of yarn toward your sweater. <laughs> so, and he was he was eating that up. He was buying it. I'm like this kid will. You know, I mean, he works hard for hockey to work hard for hockey. There is intrinsic drive, but, uh, you know, it's not like he needs money or Bruins tickets or anything. He's like, oh yeah, I'm totally going to work for that sweater. So that tells me he truly is knit worthy. I am thinking of knitting the Lisa Chemery, uh, design, um, the Hobbit vests with pockets is, um, and he would like to have the pockets. This does only go up to a 10 year old sizing. Um, and he is going to be 11 this year. So I am going to do a little finagling and see if I can um, extend that with uh, either gauge or adding stitches. It's a basic kind of pebbly motif. Um, maybe double moss stitch or double seed stitch, double moss, moss stitch, moss stitch is, I don't know. Sometimes I get a little bit confused on the vocabulary, but I think it's uh, two knits, uh, two purls, and then two knits, two purls, and then reversing it. So, um, so that's going to be for him. He already decided he would like some uh, nice wooden buttons to go with it. So the kid is uh, well on his way to becoming my little Tolkien nerdette. So nerd junior. <laughs> oh, no. I also brought with me a bit of... Let Lopi. I have aspirations to knit uh, the Drema again by Jennifer Steingass. Um, I knit this before in St uh, Nash Island Light. 
and I just had a hankering to knit it again. I really love it and I want a dark version with a light motif at the top and I picked out, is this Atlantic um, on Let Lopey? Doesn't have it written down. It's color 1415 and color 86. So this will be the overall main color and this will be the contrast. So this has got a little bit of a bluey green. I think it's called Atlantic or North Sea or something like that. So it has like a bluey green uh, feel to it. And then I've knit with this color a lot in my past history. So I brought that with me. I might cast it on tonight um, if I'm not editing this podcast. <laughs> um, I would really like to take advantage of uh, my parents' internet. It's very good here. So I brought that, see if we get that cast on. I could cast on the Hobbit vest for Cameron. Um, and, you know, it's not like he's in dire need for a ton of new knits. Um, I also brought with me the pieces, the yarn that I was going to, or am, will do, <laughs> uh, cast on for Annie. I am going to be doing another Lisa Chemery pattern for her in this purple and another Lisa Chemery uh, pattern for her in this blue. One's a bonnet, one's a dress. Um, so those are here to be cast on with the needle already in the bag. I do like to, I have, I, most of my project organization, I use, um, uh, matter root and she has a variety of different types of bags. This is her linen drawstring. And I like these softer bags for traveling, um, and for smaller projects, they come in a variety of motifs. I did notice on her Instagram that she is putting together some older motifs, but maybe haven't been around in a while. She's got some new motifs and eh, I love her work with wool and can uh, wax canvas and oh, I love her stuff. And I also, I saw a new mitten pattern. I know it's a really interesting segue. Um, I saw a new pattern by Ronya Hakalito. I think it's new. It came up in my Ravelry queue for mittens done in uh, Alpha Slopey. And I am thinking of using some of this stash to do that for a friend. So I have a knitworthy friend, uh, knitter multiple hats, um, and uh, I saw these come up and I was like, she would like those. So these mittens uh, could go on the needles as well. Um, and I, I pulled this out of stash because I wasn't sure if those two had enough contrast for patterning. And I don't know what this is, but I'm wondering if that would work um, as the pattern for that. I have uh, enough of it. I did weigh it before I... I left. So you can see I was just really feeling the bubbling energy of um, excitement and inspiration and momentum with my knitting, uh, getting a couple of those projects secured and, you know, both finished and certain portions of them finished. I brought with me as well. Uh, anything else? I think that's it. Oh, I did bring and I've worked this gets, you know, I am not, I'm not struggling with this project, but I'm a little bit like, gosh, it's so hard to make it portable. And <laughs> this is the Roots and Shoots sweater by uh, Teti Litzak. And I've got that on the go and I am knitting this in New Tiden, um, both the main color and the contrast color. So I haven't done very much. Um, and I am using one strand of Knitting for Olive Mohair with the main color. So I'm doubling this contrast color because it feels a bit thinner um, or has less fiber um, in its grist. So the, it doesn't feel as dense as this single. So this is going to be double. This is single held with mohair and this is double. So when I held mohair with this, it just, the weights didn't feel right. And it wasn't really, I don't know. I just didn't really like the way it looked. I had worked quite a bit of the beginning pattern. So those two new Tiden and then a matching color in mohair. So I did bring that with me. I'm on an increase row, but again, I feel a little bit like, Ugh. I don't know, get over it, Sarah. So that's really all I have to share. And uh, you can see that I've been doing some dream knitting fueled by my niece and nephew's interests in uh, their own knitted wardrobe. Um, there's a lot of uh, momentum there for them. They just keep putting in requests and finding yarns and wanting to engage with 
my stash. And I've also been really satisfied with going through my stash and looking at what I have for sweaters worth and just feeling the same feeling I had when I purchased it so long ago. We're talking 20 years of stashing, 20 years plus of stashing. And also moving out smaller pieces of um, previous sweaters or one skein that I really just thought was so beautiful. Um, and finding homes for those knitted items to be appreciated and worn and used. So I've done a lot of that and it's felt really good. Um, and I, as you can see, uh, was really enjoying going through what I had again, um, organizing, planning, all the pieces that I find uh, so invigorating about starting a new project. On that note, I am going to bid you a fond farewell and really double cross hope that this all came out wonderfully and I will see you next time. Thank you so much. Many blessings and fond wishes to you. Take care. Bye.